Okay, so now we're going to talk about meiosis. Um, it's definitely different from mitosis in several different ways. The main way being that it only happens in germ cells. It does not happen in somatic cells. And remember, germ cells are only found in your reproductive organs. If you're a female, that's your ovaries. If you're a male, that's your testes. And the entire purpose, I guess, of meiosis is to produce the gametes, the sex cells. In females, that's going to be the eggs, and in males, that's going to be the sperm. And this is really important in genetics because this is where all of the heredity is passed down. All of the traits are passed down to the offspring. So we start out just like we did in mitosis. We have a cell, and again, if it was a human cell, it would have 46 chromosomes in it. Um, we're using an organism that has a total of two chromosomes in it. And this organism has half of its chromosomes from its father and half from its mother. Um, there are two genes on here. Um, we have a capital A, little a, and uh, we have a capital B, little b, so we are both heterozygous dominant for both of these traits that are on here, eye color, hair color, whatever we want to call them. Okay, so now it's time for meiosis and the cell is going to divide. Well, the first thing that it's going to do is the same exact thing that happened in mitosis. The cell is going to get bigger, and when it gets bigger, it is going to make a copy, exact copy of the DNA inside of here, okay? So now we have, here was our original chromosome from our dad, and now we have an exact copy of it, capital A, capital, or capital, a, capital B. Here was our original chromosome from our mom, and we have made an exact copy of it. Little a, little b. Great. Now we've got to divide. And what, but what is going to happen before it divides is something that's super important for meiosis and makes it completely separate from mitosis. We get something called crossing over. And it's basically a shuffling of genetic information. And here's what happens. The chromosomes move toward each other. They want to kind of find their like chromosomes. And as they move toward each other, something can happen. They can touch and they can actually cross over their genetic information. Because right now, if I was to split this cell into four sex cells that were haploid, okay, we'd have one that was capital A, capital B, another one that was capital A, capital B, one that was little a, little a, and another one that was, or, or I'm sorry, little a, little b, and another one that was little a, little b. We would really only have two combinations of genotypes in the gametes, okay? We want more combinations. How do we get that? We get it from crossing over. So here's what these cells do. These chromosomes line up, they're touching, and they actually cross over each other like this. And when they do, they can change their genetic uh, makeup, okay? Now, you're not losing genetic information, you're not gaining genetic information, you are changing it, you're shuffling it. And in the lesson plan, I referred to it as Ron's self-shuffling deck of cards. If I have a deck of cards here that has 52 cards in it, um, and I shuffle those cards, are all of the cards still there? Yes, all of the cards are still here. We have exactly what we had before we shuffled. However, everything is just in a different order. And just like when you shuffle cards so you can hand out a different hand and everyone's not getting the same hand for every round of a game, when we shuffle the genetic information and shuffle the DNA, we're going to be giving the offspring a chance of having a completely different um, set of genetic information to work from. So here we go. Um, our cells pinch off now, like so. And now, we have two cells, just like we had at the end of mitosis. However, these two cells are not exact copies of the parent cell. They are completely different. Remember, the original parent cell was capital A, capital B, uh, little a, little b. Well, now we have, um, a, and that was the original one here, okay? Now we have a cell that has capital A, capital B, little a, capital B, and capital A, little b, little a, little b. Totally different genetic information. Now watch what happens. These are now going to split. And as they split, they are going to form a total of four sex cells, four gametes, 
four sperm cells or four egg cells. One goes in here, one goes in here, one is in here, and one is in here. These cells are now haploid. They have half the number of chromosomes as that original cell had, that original germ cell. So we've gone from diploid down to haploid. Um, each has only one. Now, this is kind of super important because as you know, um, the zygote, which is the result of the sperm and egg coming together to form one cell you in your mom's womb, um, the zygote is diploid. So it has 46 chromosomes. And if we have a mom and dad that are each contributing half, that means that we can only get 23 from each. So that's why we have to get these cells down to haploid. So we can have the same exact um, combination coming in, half from mom, half from dad. So now look what we've created. We've created, let's say these are sperm cells. We've created this sperm cell that has little a, big B. So, I mean, if we put it allele wise, um, it would be, it, it would have these two um, possible alleles, okay? Um, this one has capital A, little b. This one has little a, little b. This one has capital A, capital B. Now, it's gonna come back and combine with an egg from a mom, and that's where we're going to end up with that other, other half of the chromosome set. So, let's just, for fun, say that these are two sperm cells out of the four that were created, and these were two egg cells out of the four that were created. Let's combine them and see what we get, okay? They come together, boom, crash, pow, fertilization, zygote, U, one cell, and now you have capital A, little a, so you're dominant for this top trait, and you have little b, little b, you're recessive for this trait. Now this one's going to come together. Same thing, fertilization, crash, bang, boom. Sperm meets egg, zygote is created, your sister or brother, whoever it is. They're going to be capital A, little a for this trait, okay? That's the same as you, but they're going to be capital B, capital B for this other trait. This is how you might end up, say this is eye color, the A's, okay? You and your brother have the same eye color, but hair color is the B's. And maybe your brother has brown hair and you have blonde hair because you have the recessive and he has the dominant. So you have some things in common and some things that are completely different, but it's a mix of your parents.